This is the code where we have firstly used schedule executor service. Let me go into this class. As we said, this is the interface extending the executor service. If I go into executor service, this is another interface extending the executor, which is actually the base interface. Three, because the delay is of three seconds. So this is the biggest difference between schedule with fixed delay and schedule at fixed date. If you remember, if this was the case of schedule at fixed date, the same thing. Okay, I'm just changing the method to schedule at fixed date. Now it will not be five seconds apart. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Code with Ease by Varsha. We have been doing a playlist on multi-threading in Java and these are the questions which we have already covered. Also, we are doing another playlist for threads coding question where we try to talk about the concepts, the classes of Java Util concurrent package along with some problem statement and we try to see that along with the code demo, all the different concepts that we need to know. Be it producer consumer problem, thread factory, thread pools, executor framework and so on. Continuing with that, today we want to talk about a very important aspect or a very important implementation of executor service, which is called scheduled executor service. Now, before we dive into it, we are going to, of course, start with a problem statement also. But let me talk about my problem statement, which I was given probably a couple of years back in my company, where I where I accidentally discovered about scheduled executor service. So what I had to do is uh, there were three threads. Okay. three concurrent tasks or three concurrent threads rather okay so one was task creation handler task deletion and third is the cleanup thread so we were utilizing apache mesos which is nothing but a cluster management system which is usually used for managing the distributed systems to manage the resources efficiently for distributed systems so these two are existing code task creation to create and launch the task deletion for removing the completed or terminated task based on some logic to free up the resources what i had to do is i had to write a cleanup thread which would utilize the scheduled executor service eventually to periodically scan the cluster for lingering on stale tasks that were not removed by the deletion thread. So whatever task was not being deleted successfully, I, I mean the cleanup thread had to do it. So this is the usage of scheduled executor service which I found in the industry while I was writing the code for this. So on that note, let's begin. So let's start with the scheduled executors. So what is happening is firstly, so what are scheduled executor service? Firstly, this is an interface, which is extending the executor interface. This is the diagram. So we have the executor. Now executor service is extending this particular interface. And in turn, scheduled executor service is executing the, uh, extending the executor service. We have already talked about executor and executor service in one of the videos earlier where we discussed also about thread pool. So I would request, so I would advise you to uh, check that video out before even jumping onto scheduled executor service because you would need a solid foundation of what executors and executor service is before understanding about scheduled executor service, right? So as I mentioned from my real life use case that it is used to execute a task after a certain period of time or with some certain time interval, like you want to do that repetitive task again and again at some time interval, at some time interval apart. So what are firstly the useful methods of the scheduled executor service? We're also going to go to the ID and check that out. Firstly, the schedule, we'll see a code demo for that, which is helpful to create the task with various delays. Schedule at fixed rate and schedule with fixed delay, we'll see a demo of this as well. Schedule with fixed rate is used for repeated execution. Like I said, you're trying to, the cleanup thread was trying to repeat the execution of the cleaning up process at certain time interval, maybe one second apart, or it can be one hour apart. That is something which is left with the business logic, but you want to schedule the task for repeated execution at a fixed rate, even if previous executions are delayed. So this line is important. And finally, we have the shutdown method where it will shut down this scheduled executor, where it is going to shut, shut down the scheduled executor service so that previously submitted tasks will be executed, but no new task will now be executed. I mean, there will be no, whatever the tasks have been submitted, that will get executed, but nothing new will be accepted. So now we will see the code demo using these methods that we have just discussed. This is the code where we have firstly used schedule executor service. Let me go into this class. As we said, this is the interface extending the executor service. If I go into executor service, this is another interface extending the executor, which is actually the base interface. It is a, also called as functional interface because it has only one method, which is execute. So executor, then executor service. All the methods that you're seeing that shut down, shut down, all of this will be borrowed because it is a base class. And finally, you have scheduled executor service, which is extending the executor service and adding its own method. So first, let's see one by one the method. So firstly, we have schedule method, right? So what it takes is three things, the runnable command, the task, the runnable, the work, which the thread is actually going to do. 
what is the delay and the time unit so it is submitting a one shot task it is no periodic or repetition it is not periodic uh, submission of task like periodically it is not going to repeat just one shot you submit it and you are done next what is next we see there are two overloaded version one takes a runnable another takes a callable so we understood that schedule method is having its two overloaded version one is taking runnable another is taking callable and it is a one shot mechanism i'm done i'm submitting it i'm done and dusted let it execute once like i've just scheduled it one time scheduling but the recurrence function is not happening here it is not recurring it is not doing it again and again for that we have two more methods schedule at fixed rate schedule with fixed delay the next question that comes to your mind is what is the difference between both of them if you notice the parameters are still the same runnable initial delay the delay between each task or each execution and the time unit here also just that instead of delay it's got a period now what is the difference we have to prove it with the help of a code example so let's see the code so here i have schedule so here i am using the schedule at fixed rate i'm just trying to print out whatever the current time is what i'm doing is i'm trying to simulate the task execution time so let's say i want to take the task execution time as 3 seconds and period which is going to be the difference at i mean at what rate it is going to do the schedule is 3 seconds let's see what happens when we run this we have first task which is executing 610 then we have 613 616 which means every task is 3 seconds apart which means this period is being honored every 3 seconds apart let's say i my task let's say my task is taking 2 seconds is it still 3 seconds apart so let's find it out okay so we can see that it is still 3 seconds apart so it doesn't matter what is the task execution time schedule at fixed rate will always run at whatever period you have specified at that particular fixed rate but there is a caveat here it says that if the execution of the task is taking longer than its period here i have given 3 seconds let's say it's greater than 3 let's say it's taking 4 seconds then the subsequent executions may start late but will not concurrently execute so if you your own task is taking more time than the specified period then the entire execution of the rest of the task is also going to be delayed let's see what happens if you observe now every task is not is the difference between the task is not 3 seconds anymore it is 4 seconds because each task is taking 4 seconds to complete so it is not honoring this period anymore the reason is this if the time taken to execute this task is lesser than the period then it is fine but if it is more then rest of the task will also get delayed which means you have to be very careful whether your task is actually going to take more than the estimated time if yes the rest of your executions are going to get delayed so this is one thing which you have to remember when you are using schedule at fixed rate now coming to the another method which is schedule with fixed delay what is the difference between these two so to prove that see if you read this particular line it is saying it will also submit a periodic task which will get enabled after the initial delay but it is going to honor the given delay between the termination of one execution and the commencement of the next so your task which is your task number 1 which is ending and the task number 2 which is commencing it is going to honor the particular period which means this particular delay that you are giving it is going to honor that delay and it is also going to honor how much time your every task is taking so let's see with an example so i'm going to uncomment this part and let me run this so what i'm doing is here i'm giving a delay of 3 seconds and every task is taking 5 seconds or let me just reduce it to 2 seconds so i'm saying every task is taking 2 seconds and the delay is 3 seconds what happens here and i've also given initial delay of 3 seconds so it started after 3 seconds so 70 75 80 what do you notice over here the time apart is 5 5 seconds is coming from this 2 seconds plus 3 seconds so like i said it is going to honor the delay that is fine but it is also going to honor how much task each how much time each task is taking and after only after the one task is completed only then the next task is going to start so 2 seconds for task 1 so before task to start it will take 2 seconds 
for this task one to finish plus it will add three because the delay is of three seconds so this is the biggest difference between schedule with fixed delay and schedule at fixed date if you remember if this was the case of schedule at fixed date the same thing okay i'm just changing the method to schedule at fixed date now it will not be five seconds apart let me run it again the initial delay of three seconds is happening so it's 947 950 953 everything is three seconds apart not five seconds apart whereas in case of schedule with fixed delay was five seconds apart it was adding up the period the delay plus the time taken to execute so now we have understood the three main important methods of schedule executor service along with the shutdown method of course the schedule the two overloaded versions of schedule method the schedule with fixed delay and schedule at fixed rate so moving on to see some of the real world use cases of this wrap up today's video with some of the real world scenarios i already started with one periodic data cleanup so that kind of cleanup task if you have to write uh, where it will do the cleanup of your resources at certain time interval you can do it using schedule executor service reminders and notifications again needs to happen at certain time interval apart you can use this report generation is also something you want to report generate a report at 9 am daily you can use this so these are some of the use cases of schedule executor service so yeah that was all about schedule executor service today it's a very short topic but it is equally important as you could see from the example that you that i gave at the beginning that how how knowing about schedule executor service is important because when you're given such task you do not really have much time to uh, read up on these kind of things and then implement it you should have some background knowledge of what are the available tools and technologies and that is the very reason of doing this kind of videos so you are aware of everything that is available around java threads and concurrency so that you do not face any issues or you do not face any issues in understanding where to use which tool to fulfill your use case and that is why i also try to include the real world scenarios towards the end of every video I would highly recommend to watch rest of the videos of the Java threads and concurrency. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you got some value out of it. Please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much.